What's going on all my fantasy football fans out there? It's Waver Wire Queen. Welcome to my channel. Today I am going to give you some players that you should start because it's going to help you win and some players that you should sit because we are not trying to lose in week two. We're going to jump right into it. Teddy Bridgewater had a great game against the New York Giants. She was an improved defense and is still an improving defense. This week he has a really good matchup against the Jacksonville Jaguars who allowed the Houston Texans to put up 37 points on them. And no one was expecting that. I know I wasn't expecting that, and I'm sure you wasn't either. Nonetheless, Teddy Bridgewater, he has some really nice weapons on offense in Denver. He's got Cortland Sutton, who's coming back from knee injury. He's going to take some time to get into it. And you got Hamler, Patrick, Javante Williams, Noah Font, and you got Melvin Gordon, who had a 70-yard touchdown. Okay, against the Giants. So Teddy is um, a really solid uh, play this week. He's accurate. He's not going to take too many risks. And this is definitely a good start considering what um, Tyrod Taylor was able to do against the Jaguars last week. So if you have Teddy and you are considering starting him, especially in a super flex league, go on and do so and do it with confidence. Another player you should consider starting is, uh, well, several players you should consider starting are the Arizona Cardinals. If you played them all last week against the Tennessee Titans, you probably won. <laughs> all right. Hopkins, this is a really good matchup for Hopkins, Chase Edmonds, and Kyler Murray. Obviously, these are uh, players that are must starts every week. They are at home um, against the Vikings, who, one, allow Joe Mixon to go off for 127 uh, rushing yards. The... Um, you know, with a, a bad offensive line, because everyone knows that the Bengals' offensive line is, is not good. Goodness, if you watched the game or, or just uh, caught a little bit of the game, you watched uh, Joe Burrow running for his life at times. And um, obviously, we've seen Jamar Chase find his hands, and he had a, um, a nice, solid game, too. So what do you expect from Hopkins and um, Kyler Murray? I expect them to go off and have a a damn good game and then Chase Edmonds even though Connor had more um, touches Chase Edmonds to me is the better option at running back especially in PPR league so start these guys with confidence and you're most likely gonna win this week another player you should start and I know people are gonna be like he fumbled the ball Damian Harris running back with the Patriots. Okay, so he fumbled the ball last week. Hell, uh, Stevenson fumbled the ball last week. They both fumbled the ball last week. So uh, who are they going to go with? Obviously, they're still going to go with their guy, their starter. He has a very good ma matchup against uh, the New York Jets. We all know the New York Jets, mm, not that good. CMC went off on them. Obviously, CMC is on a whole other level than Harris. But nonetheless, the Jets are not that good. So I expect... The Patriots to run the ball, run the ball well, and I expect Harris to have a nice game. He had about uh, 20 carries uh, on um, Sunday. Expect more of the same this Sunday, but also expect him to not fumble the ball, okay? Because he looked like he was devastated and pissed off that he, he fumbled the ball. So he doesn't normally uh, make those kind of mistakes often, so I expect him to redeem himself and have a hell of a game against the New York Jets, and this is definitely, uh, you know, this is a, a, a divisional game, so it's it's going to be a good game. Nonetheless, uh, I'm, I'm predicting the Jets are going to win, and Harris is going to have a hell of a game. Another player to consider starting is Joe Mixon, my boy Joe Mixon, who I've been saying all summer long is going to be uh, a candidate for comeback player of the year. He's really good, and what did he do uh, on Sunday? He had a hell of a game, 127 rushing yards. He looked amazing. He's going up against the um, the Bears, who allowed Darrell Henderson to average 4.3 yards per carry. The Bears didn't look that great on both sides of the ball. I expect Mixon to have a really nice, solid game against the Bears. Yes, this is even though Khalil Mack is out there, I still expect Mixon to play well. And he's, I don't expect him to have the 127 yards, but I still expect him to at least hit the the 90 to 100 mark between that area and have at least one touchdown, which is really good, okay? All right, so let's talk about some players that you need to put on your bench. You need to have them sitting all the way at the end of your bench because if not, you're going to be losing week two, 
And guess what? We're not trying to lose our hand these fantasy football streets if we try to do the right things and plan and sit players who don't belong on the field that day for us. So Mike Davis is going against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who had the number one run defense last year. As you uh, can see, he made Ezekiel Elliott look like he didn't belong on that football field. I know the Cowboys didn't uh, run the football as much, but anytime Zeke got the ball, he didn't look good. I'm staying away from that run defense. It's still really good. You have a better chance passing on them than running on them. So Mike Davis, even though he looked good at times against the Eagles, he's all the way at the end of my bench. He's actually not on my bench. I don't have him on any of my teams, but if you do, you better have him on your bench, okay? Because you're not going to like the results, okay? Okay, I'm just letting you know. Wave wire queen just letting you know out here. Another player to consider sitting is Carson Wentz. He's at home, though, but it's against the Rams who have a hell of a... <laughs> They have a hell of a um, passing defense, run defense. Their defense is just really good. They they lost some key players, but they still are really, really good. They were top five last season in both categories. Uh, so Carson Wentz didn't look that great on Sunday. So I'm going to have him on my bench. Seattle look made uh, – I'm sorry. Carson Wentz made Seattle look like the old defense from back in the days. And I – I think their defense is solid, but it's not on the level it was in the past. However, Carson Wentz need to be on your bench because the Rams' defense is the real deal. This is why they're going to go far in the playoffs, especially now that they have that quarterback who can throw the football and be accurate. So Carson Wentz needs to be all the way at the end of your bench. I have him on my bench, and he's going to stay on that bench this week because I need some points out here from a quarterback because if my quarterback ain't scoring, I'm most likely not winning. And that's the same thing that, that you should consider too. So Carson Wentz on the bench didn't look good last week. It's not going to look good this week. So wise decision, park it on that bench. Another player to consider adding to your bench is James Robinson. He is going up against the Denver Broncos, who people are sleeping on them. They have a underrated, really solid defense. They played very well against the New York Giants, played the hell out of the run. Uh, Saquon on the average, like, what, uh, 2.5, 2.6, somewhere in that vicinity, yards per carry. I understand he's just coming back from injury. But nonetheless, the defense looked really, really good. Um... James Robinson, I expected him to have a really good game last week against the Texans. I'm sure most people did. However, he stunk it up. The, the whole team, for the most part, stunk it up. But I expected better from him. I got him on my bench because Denver's defense is really good, and I have better options. If you have better options, play those better options because you'll have better results. This may be a repeat of last week. And, you know, when you had these high expectations for him last week and he stunk it up, may, of course, you – week one, you put his, you put him on the bench, okay? And another player I'm going to say put on the bench, and I know you're going to say, no, that's crazy, Derek Carr. Um, he played well against the Ravens. I don't know what the hell the Ravens was doing out there at times. Um, but he, he's going up against the Steelers. They made Josh Allen look average. They made Josh Allen look, Allen look like that, that rookie Josh Allen that everybody was pretty much ready to uh, move on from. He didn't look like the old the Josh Allen the last year. I don't know who the hell was playing on this past Sunday, but Derek Carr should be on your bench because the Steelers is the real deal on defense, and they are going to make Derek Carr look like Derek Carr. So you know what you need to do? Put him on your bench and use a better option. And first of all, if you are starting a quarterback as a one quarterback league, Derek Carr is not your starting quarterback. He's maybe your backup or he's on waivers. However, if he is your starting quarterback and you have a better option on your bench, you better go with that option or you better look at picking someone up on waivers because this is not going to be a good week for Derek Carr. This is going to be the normal Derek Carr where it's not going to look pretty. Okay, now at times in that Ravens game, it didn't look too good, but... He ended up doing very well. However, this this is Steelers defense. It's, it's not happening this week. So if you want the best chance to win, 
you will sit Derek Carr and go with a better option. But we're smart. He is not our starting quarterback. He's a, a backup on waiver, so we're not worried about it. But if you got him, you better listen to Waiver Wire Queen and park him right on that bench all the way at the end of that bench. All right, y'all. Y'all hit that like button. Sub hit subscribe and follow Waiver Wire Queen for more on fantasy football. I'm going to get you right this season. We're going to have some fun. Y'all have a great day. Peace.